in their life state. That's what them, some of them look dried. And as herbalists and veterinarians who choose to use herbs, you need to know what a herb looks like dry. And what it tastes like, smells like, feels like. So I have brought some of them. Um, I have not labelled them because when I did my training, this is how we were introduced in herb identification. We need to taste them, smell them, and then say, this is that herb, this is that. Herb. So I did say already what this one was and what this one is. So you have tasted it. This is one I have not talked about, but this one has found its way in the treatment of um, Cushing's in horses. What is it? Chia. No, it's not chia. It's a very aromatic herb. Have a smell on it. It's a very old name for it is monk's pepper. It's Vitex agnus castus. Oh, okay. It may have, because it has not been ideally stored in this mm. container, but it's the essential oil in there that is really. But this is Vitex agnus castus, and research in and horses have shown that that can help in pushing disease with horses and in iron oil resistance. Oh, I've got a strong taste that time. Can use this section of this uh, Well, I wouldn't fit it to a stallion. No, because you definitely end up with sexual dysfunction. <laughs> but it is a hormone balancer, it works through the pituitary gland. So yeah, it is a, a hormone balancer, for, especially for the female. If you give it to a stallion, uh, you might as well not have one, because in the long term they probably have a reaction to it that makes them not so stalliony anymore. That's the old name, monk's pepper, because it was given to the monks to keep them celibate. Another herb I spoke about, and um, yes, it's you know what it is. It's the licorice. No, no, no but the licorice in my hand. I think it's the or or whatever. No, it's, it's not. Bark. It is bark. Mm. Will it bark? <coughs> hmm? Will it bark? white willow bark, it's a very distinct smell. It is when I work with it, it, it grinds down really, really fine and it's, the, I mu it must be the stuff snuff's made of because when I get it up my nose and into my sinus, it's the sneezing and the mm. mucus that starts running and everyone goes, oh, you should wear a mask when you do that. And I says, no, it's great for my sinuses. Mm -hmm. Anti-inflammatory works. Um, have a guess what that is. There is a dead giveaway, oh, sorry. A dead giveaway in there. Mm -hmm. <coughs> I mentioned the name. Oh, yeah, right. You know what it is? I haven't mentioned this one at all. No, no label on it. No. It wouldn't be herb identification if I put a label on there. <coughs> it's in every good curry. There wouldn't be an Indian curry that doesn't have it in it. And it is a turmeric. No. <laughs> One session of turmeric. You know what it is? No. Fenugreek. Oh, it's It's fenugreek. It's actually one of those herbs that, if you look at old farrier books, and uh, if they will have a horse that is worn down from too much work and stuff like that to pep them up, that's what they feed them. They feed them. Oh God, Trigonella fernum grecum. Trigonella. Trigonella fernum grecum. Yeah, because it, it, it belongs to the 
clover family. Mm. To the clover family. It's the clover, yes. It belongs to the clover family. So this is one of the herbs that you want to give to a mare that is slow with lactating. It brings, it really helps to bring the milk down. But if you have a mare you want to get into foal, you do not give this. Because it is a uh, clover, it's estrogenic. So you don't geldings do really well on this. Geldings love this. One I haven't spoken out of either. Yeah, that's it. I left a container of fenugreek in my house, in my room in Perth, and when I came back, all the room stank of fenugreek. I love it. Tell you the fruits of that plant are lovely, especially as a coolie of vanilla ice cream. It's raspberry leaf. So raspberry leaf is one of those herbs that, if you go on the Fall Club or something on the Facebook, they you know. It's a raspberry leaf for your mare. Raspberry leaf is great in mares that you want to prepare for uh, pregnancy because, and in humans as well because it tones the uterus. Use it in the first trimester. Stop it. And then start again in the last trimester to tone the uterus. And it makes it, it, it strengthens the uterus so when it comes to labouring it actually has a better force to push out. Also recovers better after labour in contracting back to its normal size. But it's not a herb that you want to give during pregnancy, during the, the high phases of the pregnancy, because it is so tonic on the uterus, it can actually cause miscarriage. But it's one of those tricky ones. Just because it is good for pregnant mares doesn't mean it should be given all the time. What's to the Rubus? It's a rose fan. It belongs to the rose fan. Uh, raspberry leaf. Uh, rubus. Not negrum. That is blackberry. Rubus, rubus, rubus. Sorry. Doesn't matter. Rubus, fish animals. <laughs> yeah, everything that is this. <laughs> no. Um, there's only so many botanical names you can remember. And it is. And it doesn't have raspberry in it. There you go. Um, Google. But it is a rubus, rubus something. And last but not least, I should recognise that just by looking. At, this one has lost a little bit of its dead giveaway. No, it's lost a bit of it. Yeah. 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 If you eat it, you can still, it still has a sting to it. Now the common dosage, as I learned in four halls, is a tablespoon of this. A tablespoon is one, roughly one gram. I have seen stuff on the internet where they recommended a quarter cup of garlic granules. That is scary. So a tablespoon is 20 ml, a quarter cup is what, 60 ml, so three tablespoons of this. Twice a day. No, it's a tablespoon a day. And then you probably won't get so much of an issue with the Heinz bodies because not so much blood is affected by it because you don't get that high volume but unless I have if I have a horse with a cold that's you know sneezing or coughing and I think oh yeah it's a cold then I might use it but any other time I don't even use it in cooking I don't like dried garlic if I want garlic I use fresh one and then I should so the interesting thing is the dried garlic has much lower toxicity than fresh garlic 
which is obviously yes. culinary, well, culinary. You want yeah, to but the thing the is, and I looked at that, is mm -hmm. that because the, it's the alice, alli, alli, no, alice, 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 I think, it's the one that is the toxic part of the essential oil, and it is affected by heat. So depending on which way the garlic granules have been dried, the allicin may or may not be there. So if you get sun-dried garlic that's been dried in the shade under low temperatures, it may still be there. But if you go for the really high commercial turnover dried garlic, it probably has gone. So, but you don't know. You don't know what you're getting. You just don't know. And if all else fails, I'd rather put the garlic glove in there. If the horse eats it, it eats it. If it doesn't eat it, well, it obviously didn't eat it. Mm. Animals know. Animals know, as, as um, mm. Henry said, animals have the ability to heal themselves. And one of the things I learned when I did my craniosacral therapy, we talk about uh, internal physician. We have innate energy that knows how to treat ourselves. So all the best we can do as complementary therapies is support that and facilitate that energy to work its best. Whether we do that through the right herbs, the right homeopathics, the right energy healing, whatever is suitable to that animal. If we can facilitate the animal's internal healing process through the right nutrition, then that animal will do much better than with anything that suppresses and changes and forces things to go one way or another.